Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Know Your Scorpio and honestly it's one of my favorite series to make as I get to learn so much more every single time I dive deeper into it. So today let's see the components under the front wheel arch. Let's get the wheel off first. So with the wheel off let's clean up this entire section. Well, that's the primary reason for me to take up this task today. So without wasting much time, let's clean it up. So we've got it clean, at least to the best of my manual ability. So where do we start? Uh, let's start from the top. So this, now the Scorpio N has uh, independent front suspensions, which is why it has this control arms. Uh, now this is the upper control arm. Now the function of control arm is to basically uh, create a link between the chassis and the wheel and also to support the suspension components. Uh, so this is the upper control arm and this is the ball joint. And this is the lower control arm. Again, chassis, wheel, chassis, wheel. In between the two, linking both and supporting some crucial components of the car is the knuckle we have the knuckle here also uh, the upper control arm and the ball joint here and the lower control arm and the ball joint there so coming to the knuckle so this is the knuckle now this uh, houses uh, two main components which is the wheel bearing and also the braking system so coming to the braking system, this is the brake calipers, the brake pads inside and by the look of it, this is the brake pad. I think I have another maybe 10,000 kilometers or so before I need replacement or maybe sooner. Now the brake pads in the front wear a lot less than the rear in the Scorpio N. Uh, this is the retaining clips for the brake pads. This is the guiding pin. Inside is the guiding pin. This is the rubber boot for the guiding pin. And this is the bleeder valve here. Now Scorpio N has uh, twin piston setup for its uh, front braking system. As you can see that is piston 1 and that is piston 2. That is piston 2 and these again guiding or sliding pins uh, and you have brake pads on each side of the brake disc. So this is the brake pad on one side and this is on the other and this is the heat shield braking systems can get pretty hot so this is the heat shield to avoid transfer of heat to components like the rubber boots and this is the brake line coming from the master cylinder going into the braking system here and now since this is a four wheel drive version we have the drive shaft for the front wheel coming from the second differential here and it's going into the wheel housing and this is the wheel nut and this is the brake disc These are the drive shaft boots. I have one here and one here. 
so that covers the knuckle component wheel housing the bearings then uh, this is what you see this is the wheel speed sensor this wire here so now we have covered the upper control arm the ball joint the knuckle braking system wheel bearing the speed sensor the drive shaft for the front wheels uh, in the four wheel drive version then this is the steering this is coming from the steering box or the power steering box inside uh, this is the outer tie rod now this is what is adjusted for your uh, toe during alignment toe in toe out and talking about alignment your camber is adjusted from here which happens to be in the lower control arm then we have the strut uh, part of the suspension system so this is the springs inside is the shock absorber and this is the fork which again is bolted on to the lower control arm so when you hit a bump the spring absorbs the impact transfers the energy into the fluid inside the shock absorber hence the name and where it's dissipated as heat now without the shock absorber or if your shock absorber is uh, worn out typically seal or it's aged uh, the vehicle doesn't settle quickly enough after hitting a bump what else do we have here uh, this is the bump stop now this is a strong rubber kind of part another function of this is basically to avoid the lower control arm hitting the chassis so this stops the lower control arm from hitting the chassis hence bump stop so did we miss anything we've got the steering uh, we've got the tie rod out tie rod and we've got the lower control arm covered we've got the spring and the shock absorbers upper control arm ball joint knuckle braking system wheel bearing front wheel drive shaft wheel speed sensor brake line so did we miss out something ah yes this is the stabilizer bar or the anti roll bar now the function of this is uh, basically to keep the scorpio and stable while cornering or in general maintain a good stability and handling so this stabilizer bar or anti roll bar and this is the stabilizer bar links again uh, connecting to the lower control arm now i believe i have covered uh, every visible aspect uh, this is basically a mass damper you'll find them uh, throughout the chassis system now the function of this is basically uh, to absorb a certain uh, vibration or a certain frequency of vibration so that it's not transferred to the chassis or uh, basically uh, it's not transferred anywhere inside the cabin now assuming since it is bolted on to the chassis here it may be um, you know to absorb the vibrations of the engine or uh, maybe a smaller vibrations in the chassis so this is the mass damper a small piece of equipment but uh, works wonders in controlling vibrations now i believe i've covered every visible aspect that i can see ah this is your wheel arch cover good to have difficult to keep clean so that is basically all the components that is in the front wheel arch of the scorpio n uh, and i believe i've covered most of it uh, to the best of my understanding 
Now you see I'm not an expert myself, so uh, feel free to comment uh, more inputs or more functions of these. Uh, if you know, it will be helpful for me and a lot of other viewers as well. As a part of my regular maintenance routine, I like to spray a small amount of silicone spray on all the rubber components. Silicone helps repel dirt and the non-sticky variant I use also adds a degree of water resistance. This practice can slightly extend the lifespan of rubber parts by keeping them supple and flexible for longer. That said, this step is not essential. It's simply something I personally do and wanted to share with you. If you choose to try it, make sure to use a silicone spray that's safe for rubber components. And be very careful to avoid contact with brake pads and disc, as it could compromise braking performance. I hope you found this video helpful. Until next time, drive safe and take care. So, GoPro stop recording.